Hi there. Uh, some examples that will ask uh, students to use marginal utility theory to explain the relationship between price and quantity demanded. So that's what we're going to cover in this revision video. Utility is a measure, not the perfect one, but it's some sort of measure of the satisfaction that we get from buying and then consuming a good or a service. Total utility is the overall accumulated satisfaction from a given level of consumption. The key, I think, to this analysis is the marginal utility. That's the change in total utility or the change in total satisfaction from consuming one extra unit of a product. And standard neoclassical economics assumes that, uh, that utility is diminishing. And as we consume extra units, the marginal utility tends to fall. And that ultimately affects our willingness to pay for a good or a service. If you're thinking about a single product, the condition for maximizing total utility, uh, assuming that you can reach this point, assuming your budget allows you to get to this point, is where marginal utility is zero. Here's an example. We're consuming products uh, here. Quantity is going up by one each time, and we give information about total utility. Initially, the marginal utility is going up 10, 14, 16, but beyond. Uh, the third unit, the fourth unit, the marginal utility starts to diminish, 4 to 12, and continues to fall until we reach the point where the eighth unit is consumed. There's no change in total utility, so the marginal utility is zero. Now, that's clearly going to be reflected in willingness to pay, but crucially, you maximise your total utility when the marginal utility is zero, assuming the budget allows you to reach that point. Now, what about different products. Here's the slightly more complex condition required. If you have two or more products, in theory, what the consumer does is they think about the utility per pound spent or per dollar or euro spent. And the condition is that MUA over PA equals MUB over PB. In other words, the marginal utility of product A divided by its price equals the marginal utility of B divided by its price. Let's take an example shown in the table. We have two products, products A and B. A, if we consume the next unit, the utility is 15. It's going to cost us five. So we're getting essentially three units of utility per pound spent. For product B, it's a higher marginal utility, 80. But the product is four times as expensive. It's 20. But that's giving us four units of utility per pound spent. Now, in theory, assuming that consumers are rational agents trying to maximise their utility, we'd expect people to shift a little bit towards product B, perhaps less of A, to increase their utility from a given budget, because B offers more utility per pound spent. Of course, if you then consume more of B, the marginal utility of B may fall towards three, perhaps even lower. Now, what happens if the price of the product falls? Well, a fall in the price of a good or service, other things remaining the same, brings about an increase in the utility per pound spent, the marginal utility of the extra pound. And in theory, that's going to prompt consumers to change their demand as they move out of, another, of a rival product towards another product. Take an example. Uh, in blue here, in the table in blue, we've got two products again, product A, product B. In both cases at the moment, the utility per pound spent is four. Product A offers 40 utilities, costing 10. Product B offers 100 utility extra, it's costing 25. So they're essentially in equilibrium there. The marginal utility per pound spent is 4. Now in red, in the table below that, we cut the price of product B. Everything else stays the same. So B now is still 100 marginal utility if you, buy, if you consume the next unit. It's only costing you 10 pounds now, a bit deep discount. Of course, that means you now get 10 units of utility per pound spent instead of four. So we would expect, in theory, rational consumer making sort of maximising choices to shift their demand towards B because it's now giving more utility per pound spent. In the real world, of course, deep discounts, heavy price discounts attract consumers to change their preferences, to change their choices. In this case, we've created a disequilibrium. We'd expect people to move towards product B. So there we go, that's looking at how you maximise your utility with a single product and with two or more products.